you can draw this in Procreate. During this Procreate tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create this isometric mini world. Now creating this drawing might seem very challenging, but I will take you through all the steps. We'll start with the simple building blocks, then we'll create a sketch. Then on top of that, we'll create our fine line art and then we'll start coloring. And then once you are finished, once you have reached the end of the tutorial, I'm sure you will be super proud of yourself and that you'll just need to share your result. If you're sharing it on social media, if you're sharing it on Instagram, then be sure to tag me in the image, not just in the description. So I will be able to find your work and maybe we'll see it in the next video, just like these amazing results from my friends at Patreon. There you can find more than a hundred other Procreate tutorials ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. And of course, it's also a great way to support this channel and make sure that I can keep creating these Procreate tutorials. Since this is a pretty big project, we are going to be spending quite some time together. So why don't you grab a drink, maybe some tea, some snacks. Remember, you can easily hit pause if you need a break. And if you're ready, let's get started. The canvas we're using for this Procreate tutorial is 3000 by 4000 pixels and the color profile is set to sRGB. The canvas is a bit bigger for this tutorial because we will be adding lots of small details and we don't want our work to get pixelated when we zoom in. I'm going to try to keep the amount of layers to a minimum. So don't worry, I don't think you will be running out of layers. Before you get started, also make sure that you download the color palette, which is linked in the description. And now to get started with our building blocks for our isometric mini world, we are going to turn on the isometric grid. To do that, first let's grab our pencil, then go to the wrench here at the top, then to canvas, then turn on the drawing guide here and then tap edit drawing guide. And then here at the bottom, you will find isometric. And we are going to change the grid size. Just tap the number here and set it to 125 and then tap done. Now you can turn up the opacity of the lines a little bit. I'm going to set it to 70 or well, 69%. So it's nice and clear and you will be able to see the grid in the video. But of course you can set it to any opacity and to any color that you like. And once you have done that, you can tap done here at the top. Now we want all of our lines to follow this isometric grid. And to do that, we can go to the layer menu, the two little squares. We can tap the layer and then tap drawing assist. Now this layer is assisted and all the lines will follow the grid. For the brush, you can use any sketching brush you like. I'm going to use the 6B pencil, which you can find under sketching. It's a Procreate standard brush. And I'm going to set the opacity to 100%. And I'm going to set the size to 100% as well. We are going to make nice thick lines. And now let's get started with our first big block. We are going to start a little bit off center about here. That's that's about two blocks to the top. And then we are going to make a line that is 10 blocks in length. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And for the other edge, we'll make a line that is 11 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Then we'll go up four blocks. One, two, three, four. We'll do the same over here. One, two, three, four. And over here, one, two, three, four. Now we can connect these lines like this and this one as well. Then we'll go up from here. We'll go up two blocks, one, two. And then we are going to make a line in this direction and it'll be seven blocks one two three four five six seven then we'll go in the other direction we'll go about well almost nine blocks so one two three four five six seven eight almost nine two about here and then we'll go upward and we'll go a little bit beyond one block so two about here we'll do the same over here and over here as well. 
Now we are going to connect these lines like this. And we'll make a line over here to attach these parts. And then over here, we'll go to this first block, and then the second and the third. We'll go to here, like this. And over here, we'll go to about here. That's also the third block. So that's one, two, three. And then over here, we'll go up. One, two, and we'll make a block four here. One, two, three, four. And we'll go this way. One, two, three. And make a little upward line and then we'll go again one two three and here we'll go up four one two three four then we'll go back one two three and connect these lines then from here from this corner we'll go up seven and a half blocks so that's one two three four five six seven and a half and we'll do the same over here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Over here, we already have four, so we need three and a half more. One, two, three and a half. And then we'll connect these lines like this. And from this corner, we'll make a line in this direction. And then we just need to connect these areas. So first we need to go sideways like this. And then we'll connect these areas. Now finally, we'll make an extra line in this area, a little bit below this grid line. So about here. And we'll go in that direction as well. And now we have the basic building blocks for our little isometric mini world. Now on top of these basic shapes, we are going to create a rough sketch which will eventually be our base on which we will create our fine line art. So the sketch that we will be making, it doesn't need to be super tidy, but it will need to be a guide on which we can create that line art. So first thing we need to do is create a new layer on top of this one. So go to the layer menu, then tap the plus for a new layer. And let's lower the opacity of this building block layer. We'll tap the N. And we'll lower the opacity. Let's set it to around 30%. And this top layer, let's turn assisted on there as well. Let's tap it, turn on drawing assist, but we will be switching back and forth. We won't be needing drawing assist all the time because for instance, we'll also be sketching palm trees and they won't be following that isometric grid. Now on this new layer, we are going to sketch, but we do need a bit of a smaller brush. We can go to the brush menu and use the HB pencil, for example, which is also a Procreate standard brush. By the way, at the beginning, I didn't even tell you what color we are using, but of course it's a pure black, but you can also use a gray or pink or whatever. It doesn't really matter when you're sketching. Now this brush, the opacity is set to 100% and let's set the size to 100% as well. And now let's start with the bottom area. First, we'll follow this line for a bit, but not entirely, and this one as well. And I want that water area to be a bit rounded, then on this side as well, and over here. And we'll make a little line over here and over here as well. And now I want those corners to be a little bit rounded. To do that, we need to turn off Drawing Assist. So tap the layer, turn off Drawing Assist. And then over here, for instance, let's make a rounded shape, connecting these two areas. And then over here, we can make a line going down towards that bottom area. We'll make that a little bit rounded as well. And of course you can use the eraser and erase this little part just to keep things clear for your line art later. And now we'll grab the brush again and you can rotate your canvas if you like to connect these areas, make a rounded shape. And then over here as well, 
make a rounded shape connecting these two lines. Then we'll move on to this area over here. We need a rounded shape as well. Something like this. Then we'll make a line going down. You can hold your pen in place to make it snap to a quick line. And then you can tap one finger on the screen to make sure that it's perfectly vertical. And then make a rounded shape here as well. Now, on the top here, we have a beach area. We have some sand there and it's a little bit wobbly. It's a wobbly shape. We'll start here and then make a wobbly line for that beach area. Try to vary the wobbles a little bit. So something like this. You need enough space for the sand, but also enough space for that water. Then we'll go around the corner here and go for something like this. And then under the water line, you will see a rock. You will see like the underside of this little mini world. It's, it's floating in the water. Wouldn't make sense in real life, but for an illustration, it looks cool. Let's start below this line. So at the top, you won't be seeing the rock, but you will see it from the side. We'll start about here and make again a wobbly bit of a jagged shape towards its center here and then back up here to about here. Let's imagine that it's connecting there, but you won't see that line there. Then on that sand, there will be some palm trees. For example, here in this area, we can make a palm tree. We can make a bit of a curved line, another curved line right next to it. It's a little bit thicker right near that bottom. And then we have those, those leaves. We can just make these simple shapes. We don't need any indents for our leaves yet. A bit like these banana shapes, pointy banana shapes. And you can keep it messy here. Doesn't have to be perfect. We are going to make the line art later. And over here in this area, let's make a little bit of a, a circle gently. That's where we can make another palm tree a little bit from above. So let's first make these banana like shapes. Another banana shape here. And one over here. You can make them overlap a little bit. And then right underneath here, we have that stem or trunk, which is a little bit wider at the bottom. You can see this is a nice little, a bit of a smaller palm tree. Let's make another one over here. Let's start with the with the tree trunk again. A little bit wider at the bottom, thinner at the top. Rounded shape here. And then we have those leaves. Don't need to think about it too much. Just these little banana shapes. Make them overlap a little bit. Make one here behind the others. And on the beach over here, we can have a little blanket or towel. So just a little rectangular shape, maybe a ball over here. And then over here we have like the street. Let's just follow this line. And then over here, we have a little bit of rock. So it's a little bit wiggly, wobbly again. Right here behind our palm tree. Over here, it's a bit rounded. So 
So just roughly follow that line that we have for our basic building block, but make it a bit wobbly. Now these will make these nice and straight. So we can actually turn on drawing assist again to help ourselves. So tap the layer, turn on drawing assist, and then just follow these lines for our sketch. We're just refining everything a little bit. Go this way. And over here we'll go behind that little palm tree. Like this. Now let's move on to these big building blocks. Those will be our buildings. Let's start with this one. First, let's go for the top area. We are going to give it a little bit of volume. So here we'll make an extra line and here as well. And then here you can make a line as well. It will give it a little bit of depth. And over here I want like an air conditioning thing, device. First make a shape like this. Then the top part. Just making a little block here. Just like we made the big building blocks. This is also a simple block. And here we'll go down just a little bit. And then we'll go to the side. To the edge of the other building. Then we'll go a little bit to the right. And we'll go down all the way. So here the top edge. It has a little bit more volume than the rest of the building. It's a little bit wider. Now let's go in this direction. Now for this building I also want to create a little balcony. Let's make it start here. So that's two steps to the top. Make a line like this to about here. Then we'll go up a little bit and we'll go in this direction. Then back to the building and upwards a little bit here as well. Then we'll connect these two. Here we'll go back to the building and here back to the building. Now we'll go a little bit higher. So about here along this line we'll make another line for our balcony. Back to the building. Here back to the building and then we'll give it a little bit of volume. We'll go to the right here. Back to the balcony. Follow this line. And then back to the building here. The bottom part also needs a little bit of volume so go to the right here. And then we'll add a line here underneath this top part. Then we'll follow this line. And then here back to the building. And then we'll make these little pillars. So just these downward lines. Something like this. Every time you make two little lines next to each other. Something like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is just a sketch. We can definitely adjust things later on when we make our line art. Now for some doors here. Let's make a line upward here. To about here. Then we'll go to the right. And then downward again. We'll make a line in the center. And then over here we need a little door. Something like this. To about here, then downwards. And then on to our next building. Let's first make a line going upward. And over here I also want to give some volume to, well, to the walls. First let's just follow these lines. And now let's make a line on the inside. Just like this. Try to keep the space equal. Then we'll make a line downward here. Just to about here. And then we'll make a line in this direction. And a line in this direction. 
Now just remember that you can always hit pause if things are going too fast. Just take your time sketching out all these things. Now let's make a line going downward here. And this one as well. We're just following our building block. Here we'll go behind that palm tree. And then over here, let's make a little door. Make just two lines. And I want the top part to be rounded, so I'll do that later. Then I want a little window over here. And some windows here above our door. A little bit higher windows. And it doesn't have to be super accurate. Once we are doing our line art, we are going to be more precise here. So we just want an indication of where these windows will be. I also need air conditioning here. Let's make a shape like this again. A little box shape on the side of our building here. Now let's turn off Drawing Assist for a little. So we'll go to the layer menu, tap the layer, and then turn off Drawing Assist. And let's make these rounded shapes here. Just so we'll know for our line art that we are going to create rounded shapes here. And onto the other side. Let's turn on Drawing Assist again. So go to the layer, tap it, turn on Drawing Assist. And then first, let's make a little door over here. It'll be the same height as the door in the other building. And then over here, we'll have windows as well. Let's first just make a line like this. Then we'll go upward. And we'll just make two windows here. And again, it doesn't have to be super accurate. We can be more precise in our line art phase. We'll have a little line in the center. And over here, we'll have more windows. Same height, same width. With a line in the center. And now let's add a little bit of like a decorative element to the top here. We'll just make a big rectangle. This is where our little decorative element will be. These will just be like squares, little indents in the building. We just need an indication of where those will be. Now we almost have everything we need. First, let's turn off Drawing Assist again. So tap the layer, turn off Drawing Assist. Let's create a little circle here for our air conditioning thing here at the top as well. And I want a little palm tree peeping out here behind our building. So just create some leaves here. Here as well. Over here, I want a street sign. Oh, but first, let's create a little, like a sidewalk, but it's not in a good condition. Let's make a wobbly, jagged line around the buildings. Just like this. A bit like the sand. We'll just go along our buildings around the corner. And perhaps over here, there's a little part of that sidewalk. Over here behind our building, I want another palm tree. Here's a little bit of that trunk. And those leaves. some random banana shapes again. And of course you can add more details, more stuff to your little mini world if you like. The more the better. Perhaps we have some other leaves over here, some other plants, these wobbly shapes. Let's 
Over here, I want a street sign. We'll make a long pole. We'll just sketch that out a little bit wider here at the bottom. So it's just a big pole with these well pointers. Giving people directions. Little short one over here. And then perhaps some more of those wobbly leaves over here. Then for some final details over here, perhaps there's like a floaty. I'm not sure what this is called little band and in the water of course we'll have some fish and we'll have lots of detail here we can have some fish swimming over here we'll just make these little well almost like seed shapes maybe over here we have a little little squid shape like this with these tentacles and let's also create a little sea turtle just make a rounded shape then we have a shape for its head then what are they called fins or flippers and on the back as well these are a little bit shorter and it's tiny little tail. Now I think we have enough pointers, enough information here to start working on our line art. And to get started on our line art, let's first turn off the bottom sketch layer, that base layer with the big building blocks. And then let's also lower the opacity of this sketch. We'll tap the end, lower the opacity to around 30%. And then we'll make a new layer on top by tapping the plus for our line art. For the line art, I would like to use my fine liner brush, which you can find in my treasure chest brush pack. You can get it for free by going to freefromflow.com. And over here, between all these brushes, you will find the fine liner brush. For the color, we are going to use a color from the color palette. Remember, it's linked in the description. And we are going to use this second color in the first row. Now, the opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size is at 6%. Now, if you get bothered by the isometric grid a bit in this stage, then you can just go to the wrench, then to edit drawing guide, and we can lower the opacity a little bit. Let's set it to 40%. You can also change the color. Let's make it blue, for instance, so we won't be seeing it that clearly anymore. Let's tap done and let's get started creating our line art. And this might be a bit exciting. You might be worried that you might mess it up, but don't worry. You are working on a separate layer. You can always use the undo button over here or tap with two fingers where you can make separate layers for different elements. That way, if you are messing up one element, you can just go ahead and erase that layer, for instance. So using multiple layers will give you a bit more flexibility. I'm going to work on just one layer and I'm going to start by tracing that bottom area, that water. And I'm not going to use drawing assist at this time because I like it if the lines have a little bit of character. It's okay if they are a little bit wobbly. It'll just it'll add interest to our drawing. So let's just follow these lines. And you might want to rotate your canvas to be able to easily follow the lines. And of course, for these longer lines, you could definitely turn on drawing assist. I can imagine that those are a little bit more challenging. So don't worry about that. You don't have to work with drawing assist turned off, of course. But it's a great exercise. 
working on your hand control. We have that corner, around a corner. I keep rotating my canvas to make it easier to create these shapes. Then we'll go down here. And then we'll go back to the other side. You don't have to make one line like in one go. You can connect them in the center. We'll make a rounded shape. Then we'll go along our turtle. All the way to the other side where we have another rounded corner. And these were pretty much the biggest shapes in our illustration. Now let's go for the palm tree. I want the leaves to have little indents, but we will follow our sketch like this. I make an indent here and pointy shape here, then back up with these little indents and a little line on top of our leaf. And we'll do that for each of these leaves. And just remember, it doesn't have to look perfect. It's okay if it's a little bit wobbly. It'll add interest to your illustration. Like this one, little indents. This little leaf. And then these lines on top. Also to add a little bit of interest to this palm tree. Then for our, our stem or what's it called? Tree trunk. All the way down, a little bit of a rounded shape. And now let's also create these little rounded lines along the entire length by creating these rings around it. All the way to the bottom. And then you can really go for whatever area you like to start. Creating the line art here for the sand. Perhaps I want to make it even wobblier than it already is. So you don't have to follow your sketch exactly. You can make it more wobbly than it already is. Or less, whatever you prefer. But often more wobbly is easier than less wobbly. We'll go all along the beach, creating our wobbly line. Then this area, all the way to our other palm tree. You know what? Let's create that one as well. Again, we'll make these little indents for our leaves. And here we have one that is behind. So you don't have to draw the entire leaf. This one is moving to the back. It's a little bit rounded here, then pointy shape. And we have one here that's covering the other one. So I'll make this one first. And then I'll start connecting this area over here as well. I'll make this one first, which is in front. And then I'll finish this one. So let's make these lines following the leaf, the direction. And then the rest of the tree. And you can see my line is a little bit wonky as well, but like I said, that's perfectly fine. Then we'll make these rings, these little rounded lines. 
And again, here as well, the distances aren't equal all over. They're not perfect. They're just nice and wonky. Now let's do this one as well. Again, pointy leaves. Don't worry about following the sketch exactly. This leaf. Covering this one. I'll try making the leaf that is in front of the other first. This one. And finally this leaf. And then over here we'll make another tree trunk with these rounded shapes, little curved lines. Oh, and then the lines on the leaves. A little bit curved towards the tips of the leaves. This is looking great so far. What shall we do next? Shall we move downward or upward? Let's continue by creating this little floaty or little lifesaver. You can hold your pen in place to make it a perfectly round circle. That makes six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then over here, we'll follow our wobbly line again. It's going behind this thing towards our palm tree. You're a rounded shape around a corner. And we'll wobble our way to the right. Over here we have this little towel, a little bit of a wavy shape. Let's follow that rectangle. Let's add these short little lines. And then we have the ball over here. Don't make it too big. You can hold your pen in place to make it snap to the quick shape and make it perfectly round by tapping one finger on the screen. Now let's add these rounded shapes to turn it into a beach ball. Then let's follow the street. Let's first make a line over here towards that street sign and towards this corner. And you know what? Let's make this a little bit rounded as well. So a bit like this, rounded here. Then we need to go downward here because that's that rock. And over here, we need to create a little bit of extra, actually. Perhaps it's a little part of the beach. But maybe you don't have a gap over there, then you don't need to do anything. Try to create something that makes a little bit of sense. Now, these lines need to be pretty much straight. That's like the concrete of our street. I'll just try Try to not use the quick shape or the drawing assist so that you can exercise your hand control. Then over here, let's follow this, make it a little bit rounded here as well, and a little line upward. So now we have a clear distinction here between the left side and the right side. Then let's follow this line, but let me just rotate. I find it easier to make the line from this angle. So we'll just follow this. And over here towards our palm tree. Let's make it a bit rounded again over here. Towards the building. And then downward here. So, shall we first work on the buildings now? I think that's a nice idea. Let's start with this one, this one on the left. And let's just start with the top part. And of course, you can create your line art in any order that you like. 
but I, I will feel better once the buildings are done. It's okay if your line is a little bit wobbly here. It'll add character to the building. Then for this one. And our air conditioning device. Just follow your sketch. Then a little circle here. Let's also add some of these lines. Then we'll move downward towards that balcony. Let's follow this. I do want it to be, well, give it a little bit of volume. So I'll make a downward little line here. Then over here, I can also make a downward little line. Then we'll connect these areas. And you can see it's definitely a little bit wonky, but like I said, it adds character. Then we have this part. Again, I need to rotate it to make it easier. Then this area. Here, a little line. And then we have those like little pillars right here in between. Let's make a little rounded shape at the bottom. And try to make them a bit like equal in size. Try to keep the distance pretty much equal. Doesn't have to be perfect, but if it's really off, then, then it will look a little bit weird. So a little bit wonky is okay. Then one over here, rounded shaper at the bottom, then upward, then over here. And let's make one over here. And then we need the rest. We need to follow these lines. And here we also need a downward line. And over here, we'll just follow our little sketch. To add some volume here. A little line in between all of these little pillars. Then we have these doors. They are super simple right now. We are going to add something to them. Let's first just follow the outside. Then let's make an extra line on the inside. Again, it might be a little bit wonky. Then a vertical line over here. And then again, another rectangular shape on the inside of each part here as well. Line going downward. And then we are going to make these lines following the grid. Try to keep pretty much equal distance in between these lines. So a line on each side. Would you like these wooden shutter doors? I'm not sure what to call them. These are pretty old. This whole building is pretty old, so some are lost. You can color some parts in. Here we have a little hole. Let's make one here as well. And perhaps over here. 
as if these doors are missing some teeth or something. There are also some cracks in the wall. For instance here, let's just make a little jagged line. We can make multiple jagged lines in various places. Over here as well. And then for the bottom area, we have almost finished this building. Vertical line here. Then let's rotate. Follow this line. Then over here. I'm not going all the way to the door. Now for the doorway. First, let's follow what we have. Like this. And then we'll go inward a little bit. So we'll make a little line like this. Giving it a little bit of volume. Then we'll go up again. So that's the thickness of the wall. And then we have our door. It follows the isometric grid. A little bit of a wobbly line. And then we'll make these vertical lines. Like this is a wooden door with like wooden planks. There. Now let's make another crack in the wall. Pretty big one over here. It's like a vein going almost to the door. Now let's move on to the next building. Let's start with the top, just like we did with the other building. And let's first just follow those lines. I'll keep rotating my canvas to make it a little bit easier. Follow this line, then rotate again. And then a line on the inside. And while I have it in this angle, I can also follow this one. Then we'll go in this direction. Follow this one as well. And then finally this one. And here we have another line. I want some tiles on this roof. And to make those, I do want to use the drawing guide. Or the assisted drawing. Let's tap the layer, turn on drawing assist. And now I want to create these tiles, so let's just make these lines. Try to keep an equal distance. I'm using a light pressure so that these lines will be a little bit thin. And then we'll go in the other direction, creating these square tiles. So you are all the way on the other side. So it'll be something like this. Now over here for that decoration, we are going to create a bit of a square here. I can actually use the assisted drawing for now. We'll just make a square here. Give it a little bit of an indent like this. And now let's just duplicate this. We can duplicate it by going to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to freehand and make sure that color fill is turned off. This shouldn't be blue. And then make a selection around this little square. Tap that little ball here to close your selection. Then drag down with three fingers and use duplicate. And right here under snapping, let's turn magnetics on. We can turn snapping off. Now it'll be magnetically connected to the other square. Let's drag it to the right. You can see that blue line. Let's go to here. And then let's go to the layer menu. You see that little square that we have copied. We can slide to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool again and drag this one to the right as well. Try to keep an equal distance here. Now let's go to the layer menu again. Then drag to the left again. Tap duplicate again. 
then go to the move and transform tool again to move this one to the right as well. Then tap the arrow to get out of there. And let's check it out. I think it looks good. We could try and fit a fifth one, but we'll have to move all these blocks. Let's first select all three of these by sliding to the right. Then go to the move and transform tool. Move this to the left. Then we'll select the top two. First select that one, then slide to the right for the other one. Then go to the move and transform again. Slide it to the left. Then for the final one, tap that one, go to the move and transform and drag this to the left. Now let's go to the layer menu again and duplicate this one by sliding to the left, tap duplicate, go to the move and transform tool and drag this one to the right. You can see when we turn off the move and transform tool that we have a bit less space over here. So we'll need to move everything to the left a little bit. But our first window is on the layer where we have all the other line art as well. And we need it to be on a separate layer. So let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, select this little square again and drag down with three fingers and then use cut and paste. And now when you go to the layer menu, you see that we have five layers with those windows. Let's just pinch them together so they are on one layer. Then go to the move and transform tool and drag them to the left a little bit so that they are nicely centered on our building. Now I want these squares to be on the left side of the building as well. So let's duplicate this layer. We'll go to the layer menu, slide to the left, tap duplicate. Then go to the move and transform tool and use flip horizontal. And then we can move this one to the left side to about here. But I can see we don't have enough space for four of them. So instead let's go for three. We can tap the arrow tool. Then we can use the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. We can select these two on the left, close the selection, and then swipe with three fingers to erase them. And now that we have this, we can just pinch these layers together, the ones with the squares and the line art layer that we're working on, pinch them together so everything is on one layer again. And now we can continue creating our line art. Let's use drawing assist to make these long lines just to make it easy on ourselves. Let's make these long lines going down. This one as well. And this one. Now let's also do the bottom area here just up until, just up to the door over here as well. And I want a little edge of bricks there at the bottom. Let's first go upward here for our door. And then let's make a line about here. Use a little pressure, go all the way to this area. And then over here as well, up to the door. And then over here. And let's just make the door here. Let's see if it's the same size as the other one. Yeah, that looks good. And then we'll just use drawing assist to make a bunch of bricks here. First, we'll make these lines like this. Try to keep equal distance. And one more here. And on this side as well. Don't go over the palm tree. And then once you have these lines, you can start making these vertical lines. To give the suggestion that there are bricks here. You can just make equal distances like this, for example, and then make little lines in between. And 
do that for the entire area with bricks. This area as well. First you can make a bunch of these vertical lines on one area. Now skip one, make that same pattern. And then go in between for the other row. Find one for this one. There. That sure adds a bit more interest here. Let's move on and work on the windows over here. Now, I don't feel like drawing each one individually. I think it's way handier to just draw one and then duplicate it. So let's make a new layer first by going to the layer menu and tap the plus because that way it's easier to duplicate it. We don't need to make a selection first to be able to duplicate it then. Now let me turn on drawing assist just to make it a little bit easier over here. And let's zoom in. Now first let's just follow this guide. We'll make this outline. And then we'll give it a little bit of depth by making a small line like this. Then we'll go up, add a line here, short line here, and then connect these two. So now it has some volume. Now I want to make a smaller rectangle inside. We'll just go along these lines like this, then back up, add a line here. And then we'll make a line through the center. And I want these to look like shutters. So let's make some of these lines. Doesn't have to be super tidy. Can make it a little bit playful. So a short line on each side. So you get something like this. Now we are ready to duplicate this. You can go to the layer, drag to the left, then tap duplicate. And then we can go to the move and transform tool and drag it to this area. Then we can go back to the layer menu and pinch these two together. And now we can duplicate this layer. Again, slide to the left, tap duplicate, then go to the move and transform tool and drag these two down. And then tap the arrow again to get out of there. So now we have these windows. We can merge them with the line art layer. Let's pinch them together and continue working on this layer. First, let me turn off drawing assist. And then let's add some cracks here in the wall to add some character to this building. perhaps over here as well towards our door and then let's create our door first we need a little line towards the inside then we need to go up here that's the volume of our our wall then we'll make a line like this following the grid and then we can make these vertical lines again to make it look like these wooden planks, wooden door. They can be a little bit wonky. So now we are done with the left side of the building. Let's move on to the right side. Now let's start with the air conditioning. Let's turn on drawing assist again just to make it easy on ourselves. And then let's follow our sketch and create this shape. Just follow the guide and then let's work on the windows. I'll make that circle later because then we need to turn off the drawing guide again. So let's, again, let's here, let's also duplicate our window. So let's do it on a new layer again. Let's tap the plus. Let's turn on drawing assist. And then let's first Make the underside and the sides. 
and we'll make that middle line to about here. And we need to turn off drawing assist. So go to the layer menu, tap the layer, turn off drawing assist. And now we need that rounded shape here. So something like this. Then I want some vertical lines to give that suggestion of wooden planks here as well, just like with the door. So just lines like this quite thin and I want the middle one to be a little bit thicker because these are like shutters and to give it a little bit of depth we need a little line over here then we need to follow that side you could use the drawing assist here just follow that edge here as well To about here so now it has some volume here also add a little line here for that center line it looks great now let's duplicate it let's go to the layer menu slide to the left tap duplicate then go to the move and transform and slide it in this direction then let's duplicate it again let's go to this layer slide to the left tap duplicate go to the move and transform tool and drag it down here to about here and then we'll go and grab the eraser and we'll just erase that lower area then you can grab the brush again and then you can go ahead and connect this i'll grab the eraser again for this little thingy so now it looks good. Let's let's merge these layers with the line art layer. Just make sure to not merge them with the sketch layer. Just to make sure that that doesn't happen, you can slide to the left on a sketch layer and tap lock. Now let's continue. Let's turn off drawing assist again. We're really switching back and forth here. Let's make that circle here. We do need to grab the brush instead of the eraser. Works way better. So a circle over here, let's add some vertical lines and maybe a little button or something over here, a little extra thingy. And then let's add the rounded part for our door here. So something like this. And then let's add some depth by making an extra line right next to it here. And then a line following the grid like this. And then for our door, we need a line like this following the grid. And perhaps we can add a little doorknob. And let's also add another crack in the wall. All right, now we have everything on the buildings. Let's, let's work on those palm trees. We'll make those leaves with those indents again. Let's make them overlap. Another one over here. And then those lines like this looking great then the other palm tree our final palm tree this one is curved towards the back then we have this one this one is behind that building a little bit Finally, this one. And then those lines, those curved lines across our leaves. Oh, and of course, that 
trunk with some of those curved lines. Then over here, let's move down. Let's create those, those wobbly leaves. I want this one to cover the other one. Let's just make a wobbly shape and one behind it. And then let's add some of these leaf veins, just like this. And now while we are here, we can create that. Well, it's, it's like concrete, maybe it's like the, it's like the walking area, but it's not in a good shape. Just follow that wonky line that we have created. And then let's give it some volume by making a line going downward. And then we are going to just follow that line to give it some volume here. And here it's getting closer to that line because of the perspective. Let's also go ahead and create this one. Then a line downward here as well. And then follow that line. Add an extra line here. I think maybe we can create a little bit of distance here between these lines. I'll use the eraser to erase a little part. Then grab the brush. I think something like this. Then for this line. I'm trying to make it a little bit more jagged than my sketch line. Then again, make a downward line to create that volume here. just make a parallel line along the other line. And let's move on to our sign over here. Let's make a downward line. Then here we have the top a little bit rounded. Then another line going down. We need to connect this area. Then the bottom part is a little bit wider a little bit rounded like this. And then for the signs, let's make a pointy sign. And just follow our sketch. Then we have these wobbly leaves. something like this and then add those leaf veins again here as well all right let's check where are we at i want to add a little bit of texture to the side of these well like concrete plates and to do that i am going to use the drawing assist so we'll tap the layer turn on drawing assist and then we are going to make a bunch of lines like this to add some interest to this area. We'll also add some of these uh, short little vertical lines just in some random places. And over here, let's make a longer line and we'll make it go in this direction as if it's a big plate of concrete. Let's do that over here as well. So a line like this, then go downward. And then again, on these sides, we'll also make a bunch of these 
lines, these, well, they would be horizontal lines if we would be standing in front of it. And then some of these vertical lines to add that texture. And that adds some interest to this area and it separates it from the other areas. Like for instance, here for those rocks, we are going to create a different texture to nicely separate it. You know what, let's do that now. Let's add that texture on the rock. We need to turn off drawing assist for that. So we need to go to the layer menu, tap the layer, turn off drawing assist. And for these rocks, we are going to create a bit of a zigzaggy texture. It doesn't have to look exactly like rocks, of course. We just want to add some interest here. So I'm making a zigzaggy line from the bottom to the top, and then I'll add extra shorter zigzaggy lines around it. Trying to make them a little bit like diagonal, so not straight up. But think of it as a slope here. So these zigzaggy lines go in this direction and on this side they'll go in this direction. Now let me just make this pattern all over. So you should end up with something that looks like this. Then let's continue working on the sand and on the water. On the sand I would like to add well, maybe some small little clams, just like this. Very simple shape, just a rounded shape like this. Then this at the bottom and then these lines. And let's also add some little dots on the sand, just for some simple sandy texture. Just in some random places, you can make small groups of these dots so that this area has a different texture than the rock over here and the concrete plate and the trees. We want some nice variety in that texture. And on this side as well, just a few places to add those dots. And I also want to add a little texture to the water. I want to add these little wavy lines. Just around that sand. So thin little wobbly lines. Some short, some a bit longer. Following that sand, those curves of the sand a little bit. And we'll go along the entire coast of our isometric mini world. And just follow those, those curves here. I'm trying to stay close to that coast not go too close to the edge of the world. So just some ripples on the water. So you'll end up with something like this and then we can move on to the underwater world. Let's start by tracing the outside of that underwater rock. So we need a bit of a wobbly shape. All the way to the right side. And then just like with these rocks and the sand and the water, we are going to add a texture here as well. And it'll be a bit like this rock, but we will have more space between those, those cracks. 
just make some jagged shapes quite thick it's like some veins going upward you have some parts branching out some cracks that don't make it to the top try to make a nice variety and we'll go all the way to the left side creating all of these cracks so let me just fill that in and remember you can always hit pause perhaps at this time to just use this as a reference for your own drawing so now that we have all these cracks let's add little extras let's add some plants perhaps just some some wiggly lines so there's some like seaweed here and maybe some coral maybe there's some seaweed growing here as well so we'll just make some of these these wiggly lines it can be very simple maybe there's also a little little clam here little shell Now let's also add a little sea star. Just a simple star shape. And maybe we can add a little sea snail. And some plants here on this side as well, some seaweed. You can really add as much as you like. Perhaps you want to add some other sea creatures. Really, the more the merrier. Let's make another sea star. Starfish. And some final seaweed over here. not going for something hyper realistic here so don't give it too much thought just some wiggly lines and then let's go over our little squid here again nothing realistic let's give it two little cute eyes and just some wiggly lines for its tentacles Then our sea turtle. First, let's create this shell. So we'll follow that shape. Then we'll add its little head. You can change it a bit from the sketch. Then its hind, well, flippers. Flippers or feet, not sure what they are. Little tail. And then for that shell, let's make a smaller oval. And then a little shape here in the center. Like a little hexagon. We'll make these lines outward. And then let's also add some lines here on the outer ring of its shell. So it's a simple turtle. And for some fish, and we're almost there for our line art. We'll make some very simple fish. And then let's let's take a look at our line art i think we have covered everything so now that we have this we can turn off our sketch layer we can go to the layer menu turn that off now we have our clean line art you should already be very proud of yourself that you came this far don't forget to pause the video and get a refill for your tea or whatever you're drinking so you'll be ready to move on to the next part 
At first, let's give our illustration a nice background color. We'll tap the background color over here and we'll use this first color in the first row for our background. Also, we don't need our isometric grid anymore, so let's go to the wrench, then to canvas and turn off the drawing guide. Then tap the wrench again. And now to color our line art, there are multiple techniques. I will show you a few different ways to color everything. And then after that, I'll just show you what color you need to put in which area. And then you can just use whatever technique you prefer. Now the first technique is to go to your line art layer, tap it and set it to reference. And you can make a new layer by tapping the plus. This will be our layer on which we will put all of our colors. Now, if your iPad can handle it, you could make multiple layers and put different colors on different layers. That will give you more flexibility if you want to change colors later on. But I want to save layers and I'll put everything just on one layer. Now we'll drag this layer underneath our line art layer. So whenever we paint on this layer, our paint will never go over our lines. Now, since we have this line art layer set to reference, we can drop in colors on this layer and it'll look at that line art layer and stay inside of the shapes. For instance, let's go ahead and color our building over here. We are going to use this color for that. That's the fifth color in the first row. And now we can drag in the color, but you might need to adjust the color drop threshold. Let's just zoom in to adjust the color drop threshold. You need to drag in the color and then drag your pen to the left or the right. Try to go as far to the right without letting the paint spill like in this area. So I'll put it at 51.8%. And now we can also fill the other areas over here and on the inside here. Well, we have a little gap over there. So let's undo, drag it in and then adjust the threshold like this. Then drag it here. And then for the top area as well. And we also have these sides here near the door and for this doorway. Now this is an easy way to fill big areas quickly, but there's a downside. Also, I see that it has spilled on this window, but I'll just fix that later. And there's a downside and that's especially with textured brushes like this. Sometimes it doesn't fill everything properly and you will see little white areas just underneath the line art. I can easily fix that by grabbing a brush. I'm going to go to the calligraphy brushes and use the script brush. I like that brush because the harder you press, the thicker the stroke will become. But if you press very lightly, you'll get a thin line. So you get some control over how big your, your brush is without changing the size. So what you can do to fix it, you can just go over those areas of that line art and then just fill that in. But it, it, it takes some time to go over those areas. Now I'm not going to be super nitpicky. Something like this looks good. Now another way to fill areas is by using the selection tool. First, let me grab a different color. We'll grab this third one in the second row. And then we'll go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon, set it to freehand and turn on color fill. For instance, we can use this on this air conditioning thing. We can just tap in the corners to make a selection like this, then tap the little circle over here and it'll automatically fill this area. We can do the same for this one over here. Just like this. And of course you can also use that for shapes that are more curved. And then for the last way to fill areas, let's first tap the S shape ribbon to get out of the selection menu. Now for the last option, you can just simply use a brush like the script brush. And for the color, we are going to grab this one over here. First one in the second row. And you can just paint over areas like this one. 
I need to make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for 8%. And the opacity should be at 100, of course. You can simply go over the edges. Just like this. Now, if you would like to drag the color inside of this area, since it's a closed brown shape, you do need to go to that line art layer in the menu, tap it, and then turn off reference. Otherwise, it'll only refer to that line art layer instead of this brown shape that you have created. So now you can just drag in the color and fill that. Do make sure that you keep an eye on the color drop threshold if you start seeing light edges in that area that you have filled, you might need to turn up the color drop threshold. Now let me just fill these windows and doors and let's also use it for the palm trees. And let's also use it for the street sign over here. And like I said, you can use any technique you like to fill these areas. I'm just going to paint this in by hand. And you can switch it up. Some areas are easier to color with the selection tool. Some are, some are easier to just paint in. Now let's move on to this building over here. I want to use this color over here, the fourth color in the first row. And now we have already colored that air conditioning thing and the door and the shutters over here. So to make it easier on ourselves to color this area, we can actually make a layer underneath so that we don't need to worry about those areas. So let's go to the layer menu, tap the plus and then drag that color underneath that layer that we already have. And then we can go ahead and color this building. And the great thing is that you don't need to worry about painting over this door. You see, no paint is showing up there, only behind it. And then once you have colored this building, you can just go to the layer menu and put those layers together. And let's move on. For instance, I want to use this color over here, the ninth color in the first row. I want to use that for this area. Now let's go grab another color. Let's use this one over here, the sixth color in the first row. Let's use that for these bricks over here. And onto the next color, this one over here, which is the seventh color in the first row. We'll use that for these parts. And onto the next, this color over here, the eighth color. I think that would be great for these shutters but it will also work nicely on this little ball here. And over here, our floaty needs some red as well. And let's also add some white on this one. Let's just go to our color menu and double tap over here to select pure white. And now let's color these areas as well. All right, let's move on. We need a color for our door. Let's check it out. Let's use this last one, this 10th color in the first row. And let's color that door. Just doing it by hand. But like I said, you can use any technique you like. And we'll move on to this color over here, fourth color in the second row, and we'll use that for uh, this area. Then we'll move on to this color over here, the sixth color in the second row, and we'll use that for uh, this area. Then we'll grab this color, that's the fifth color in the second row, and we'll use that for these edges. And then finally for this side, let's grab this color again, but let's make it a little bit darker. Just slide to this area to make it a little bit darker. And yeah, well, I need to do it this way because I just didn't have any room in the color palette anymore. But I want it to be slightly darker than the top. So let's color that in. And now let's move on to the rock area over here. I want to use 
uh, this color for that second color in the second row and we'll use it for both the rock here and the sign so let's do that now then on to the sand for the sand we will use this color over here first color in the third row let's fill that and then for the water let's use the next color the second color in the third row now let's go for some green for our palm trees let's use this one over here seventh color in the second row for our palm trees and then for the other plants we'll grab the other green this eight color in the second row and then let's color those as well I'm going to do these by hand again just following the shape and then coloring them in and for the other one as well and let's move on we need to color some stuff on our beach for those little clams let's use that pink that we used for the building as well that's the fifth color in the first row let's just color these in by hand these tiny little things this one as well and for that little blanket that towel let's use this one ninth color in the second row again I'll color this in by hand and then we need some color for our ball over here as well let's add some blue on this side and then let's grab a yellow this tenth color in the second row let's grab that for this side now on to the rock underwater let's go and grab this color over here third color in the third row let's color it and then for that area of the water we are going to grab the next color the fourth color in the third row and I'll color that as well and for the final details we need to color the underwater fish and the plants let's grab this color blue actually this one from our blanket let's use that for this little clam then let's grab a color for the seaweed let's use this one over here fifth color in the third row you need to be very careful these are very thin you might need to make your brush a little bit smaller something like this on the other side we have more plants two more to go there and for that starfish I'll use this pink over here fifth color in the first row now let's also use it for the other one over here and then let's grab this blue fourth color first row let's use it for this one over here and for our little squid And then for the turtle, I need that green again. So that's the fifth color in the third row. Just coloring it in my hand, using very light pressure at those tips. There we need our brush to be very small.
along the edges. There, and then finally, last thing, oh, we need this little coral and the fish. For the coral, I'll use this color over here, sixth color in the third row. It's like a bit of a warm gray. And then for the fish, let's grab this one, third color in the first row. Again, I'll just color them in by hand. These are like little fish silhouettes. And this one, it's a bit of a fat fish. And now we have colored in everything. And now it's time for the final touches. Before we start adding some shadow and highlight, I would also like to change the color of the line art in some areas. And to do that, we need to go to our line art layer here at the top, tap it, and then use alpha lock. So now when we paint on this layer, our paint will only show up on that line art. Now for the color I wanted to use, I'm already using the right one. I want to use that third color in the first row. And I want to use that to make the line art in this lower section to make that blue. So let's just go over the lines there. Also along the water. To make that all blue. Just go over here. Of course, what you could also do is go to the selection tool, still have it set to color fill, and then just make a selection of an area that you want to color, close the selection, and then it'll be immediately blue. It'll save some time. So go over this area, close the selection, and then I'll just use the brush to go along this little edge. And I want to do something similar for the little waves on the water. I want those to be white. So let's grab pure white by double tapping over here. And then we'll go over those lines, making them light. And again, of course, you could use the selection tool or just go over all of these little waves by hand. Make sure that they all turn white. Final waves over here. There. Now that we have colored our line art, let's start adding some shadow to our piece to add more interest to it. And to add shadow, we are going to create a new layer on top of our colors layer. We're going to tap the plus and to make sure that whatever we paint here will only show up on our colored layer, we are going to tap this new layer and turn on clipping mask. Then we'll change the layer blending mode of this layer. We'll tap the N and we will set it to multiply, which is perfect for creating shadows. So we can paint with a color on top of our color layer and it'll change the way the colors look. It'll make them darker. Now for our color, we are going to use this one over here. It's the sixth color in the third row. I'm going to imagine that the sun is coming from this direction. And for instance, it's casting a shadow on the inside here of the building. That's a nice wonky line. Let's color this side of the wall. Just go like this. And you can drag in the color to fill it. And adjust the edges a little bit. Then we'll make a diagonal line here. And then we'll also make this cast shadow on the floor. 
Again, you can drag in the color to fill the area. There will also be some shadow on this side of this air conditioning device. And over here on the insides of these well, like indents. Let's also add a little bit of shadow to these leaves here. Right here on the underside. And this one is casting a shadow in the other leaf. So just something like this. Then we have the sides over here. It's very subtle, but it looks nice. So just the sides of these shutters. This one as well. And here the inside of that doorway. Then we have the entire side of the building. Now to quickly fill that area, you can use the selection tool again, set to color fill. And let's just make a rough selection first. Of that side here, we'll go up along this building all the way down and then close the selection. Then tap the S share ribbon again to get out of there. And then we can adjust everything a little bit. Fill some areas like the balcony over here. Just color it in by hand. And also this side of the air conditioning device. Then let's move on because this building, it's also casting a shadow on the street. So let's imagine a line going from the building to that edge of the concrete. You can hold your pen in place and make it snap to a quick line. Then over here as well, going all the way to that palm tree. That palm tree is still getting some light. You can see that we have gone over a part of the palm tree there. Let's tap and hold the eraser to make it switch to the script brush as well. Let's make it a bit smaller, 8%, and just erase this little part. Because we don't need that shadow over there on that palm tree. Then back to the brush. Let's go along the edge of the palm tree here. Here as well along the edge then we'll go and connect these two areas and then we can drag in the color so now we have a nice shadow over there we can also add some shadow to the side of that concrete plate let's make that a little bit darker I'm just coloring that in by hand. Now let's go to this palm tree. We'll just add a little bit of shadow in some areas, adding some interest to the palm tree. Also some shadow on this area. We can also add a little bit of shadow to these leaves. And these shadows, I try to make them opposite of the light source, which is coming from this direction. A bit of shadow here. You're getting some nice color variation right now. Also add some shadow right here on the sand. Also here for our little floaty. Then just follow that wobbly line all the way to this area. So 
so like then we have a little shadow right here underneath the ball let's add some shadow on these leaves and on this palm tree just along the edges over here along the edge of that leaf and over here there I also want to add a few little shadows along these cracks just in some places you can add a little bit of extra color variation it'll add some more variety here we don't have to go along all of them Just pick a few. And over here, I'm going along the right side of the cracks. And some areas on the left side. Try to vary it a little bit. And then we also need a little drop shadow for those palm trees. Those leaves, they will cast a shadow on the sand and it's a bit of a complicated shape. So to make that easier, we are going to go to the color layer. Then we'll grab the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. We will turn off color fill and we will select like the crown of this palm tree like this. Close the selection. Then drag down with three fingers and use duplicate. I'll go to this new layer that we have created. We'll tap it, use alpha lock, and then we'll tap it again and use fill layer. Now it has the same color as that other layer, but we do need to set it to multiply. So tap the end, scroll up to multiply, and then we'll go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. We'll use flip vertical and we are going to move it down so that it's a nice mirror image of our palm tree. So something like this, then we'll just go and grab the brush again. Let's merge these two multiply layers. Let's turn off alpha lock on this layer. Otherwise we won't be able to paint anything new and then let's connect this shadow to the bottom of that tree and let's close these areas we have those lines those need to be parts of the shadow as well so something like this and now we can do the same for the other palm trees for this one it's a bit more tricky let's go back to the color layer and use the selection tool this time we can't easily use the freehand selection because we have a lot of other stuff on this layer as well so this time we'll use the automatic selection now when you tap a color it'll automatically select the group of that color but when you tap and drag to the right and left you can adjust the threshold let's tap the green and see what happens well it's nicely purple so it has selected all of those leaves now if you tap and drag you'll see that it starts selecting that trunk as well or even more areas but we only want the leaves so I'll just drag to the left again or just tap with two fingers to undo let's tap and just select those leaves then we'll drag down with three fingers again and duplicate it we'll go to the layer menu tap that layer turn on alpha lock tap the layer again select fill layer then tap the end and scroll up to multiply then we'll go to the move and transform tool here at the bottom we'll use flip vertical and we'll drag it down let me turn off snapping or magnetics let's place it about here and then we can go back we can merge these two layers 
Then we can turn off elf lock, grab the brush, and then we can fix some things like these lines to make a nice little shadow here. Now let me also use the eraser to erase this part of the shadow because that's the underwater world. And then finally, we'll repeat that step for this palm tree. This time we can go to the color layer again and then under the selection tool, we can use the freehand selection tool again because we don't have any colors connected to these leaves. We can just select it like this, drag down with three fingers, duplicate, go to the layer, tap the layer, turn on alpha lock, tap the layer again, use fill layer, tap the end, scroll up to multiply, then go to the move and transform tool, flip vertical and drag it down. Then go back to the layer, pinch them together, tap the layer, turn off alpha lock and grab your brush and fix these little parts where we have those gaps. So it'll look something like this. And finally, I want to add a little bit of shadow in the water, in the depths of the water. Oh, I also see that we need to fix this area, of course, because here we also have that underwater world. There won't be that shadow there. So let's grab the eraser and make sure that we don't have any of that shadow there. Okay, so for some shadow at the bottom, let's grab a soft brush. We can grab the soft brush under airbrushing. The opacity of this brush is at 60%. Let's set the size to 25%. And let's just go over the lower area a little bit along the depths to create a little bit of shadow there. It's subtle, but it looks nice. Now onto the highlights. Let's make a new layer on top of this one by tapping the plus. Again, we'll use layer clipping mask. So we'll tap the layer, use clipping mask, then we'll tap the end and set this layer to add. Add is a great layer blending mode for adding highlights. So that's what we'll do. And for those highlights, we are going to use a different color. We'll use this nice warm color, this eight color in the third row. It's nice and warm because it's a sunny day. Now let's think about some areas that would be hit by the light. But before we add the light, let's switch the brush again to the script brush under calligraphy. So we can follow that edge. And right now it's way too light, but we'll fix that. Let's just go along that edge. Cause that's all hit by the sun. Go all the way in this direction, this edge. And now to make it more subtle, I want to lower the opacity. Let's tap the A right next to the layer name and then use the slider and set it to 30%. And then we can continue adding more highlights. Let me fix this little area. I'm not too tidy here. Now let's add some highlights here, for instance, on these little edges. Just some little lines. Also this top part will also get hit by the light. Also the tops of the leaves can, can add a little bit of light there. And you can see that even though we're using a yellow orange color, the color looks different depending on what area you are using it on. Add a little bit of highlight at the tops of these signs. Little edge, just like this. Then for this palm tree, add a little, little highlight right where the light is coming from, from this direction. So it's hitting those sides. This one. 
like this. So something like this. Then we have the top of this building. You can also lighten that up. And with just one color, with just that, that orangey color, you can add so much color variation to your illustration. This one will also be lighter. And we have this palm tree. Let's just add a few of these lines. Let's also add a little bit of light to the top of the balcony here to get some more color variation here as well. For these leaves. And let's also add a little bit of light to these shutters, just so that we get some color variation here. Otherwise it looks a little bit boring. And just along the edges. Then let's move on to this palm tree. Just a few touches of light. Perhaps this one as well. And let's also add some subtle light to the water as if some light is shining through and these areas on the sides will be a little bit lighter. Let's grab a soft brush again. So we'll go to the airbrushing brushes, grab the soft brush. And for the color, I would like to use this color over here. It's the seventh color in the third row. And let's just go over these sides, lighting that up a little bit on this side as well. So that gives a nice variation here. I also want some of that blue to reflect on our, our background layer. Let's make a new layer to do that. Let's tap the plus and drag that layer underneath our color layer. We'll still be using that soft brush. We're also using that same blue color. And let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 12%. And let's just go along this edge and add a little bit of blue there, a little bit of a blue glow like this. Then we'll go to the magic wand and pick Gaussian blur and then slide to the right with your pen or finger to make it nice and soft. I'll go for 30%. Now, finally, I also want to add some rays of light to our scene. Let's first tap the brush to get out of the Gaussian blur menu. And then we'll go ahead and make a new layer on top of the others. Let's tap the plus here. Let's set this layer blending mode to add because we're going to add light. Let's scroll down. We are also going to lower the opacity. So tap the A and slide to the left. Let's set it to 17%. So it's, it's very subtle. And then for our color, we are going to grab this one over here. It's the last color in the third row. And now we are going to grab the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. We'll set it to freehand and to color fill. Now we are going to make some rays of light. Let's start here, make a diagonal line in this direction. We'll go here then back up, close the selection. And you can already see a nice ray of light. Let's make a thinner one over here. Go back, close it. Maybe a broader one here. And let's make another one. So something like this, then tap the S shape ribbon again. Now we are going to blur this layer a little bit. Let's go to the magic wand and to Gaussian blur again, slide to the right and go for something like this. 
around 18%. And then tap the magic wand again. And this light, it won't reach everything. It won't reach this area, for instance, where we have that shadow. So we need to fix that. First, let's go to the layer menu, then tap this layer and use mask. Now, instead of erasing parts of our light ray layer, we are going to use the mask to mask parts. It's a bit like erasing, but non-destructive. So on this layer mask, we are going to paint with black to mask parts. First, we are going to do that with the soft brush. It's set to black already. Let's set the size to 25% and we'll go over this lower area to get rid of that, to make the light rays fade a little bit. And now we need to fix this area. Let's go to the selection tool, the S shape ribbon. It's already set to freehand and color fill. And now let's just select the building just like we did before. Tap the corners, close the selection. Now when you tap the S shape ribbon again, you see that we have a nice shadow over there. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 12% to make it fade a bit here. So you don't see that edge. And now let's zoom out and check it out. I can see we have this area, which is a little bit weird. Let's fix that as well. Let's grab the calligraphy brush again, the script brush. And let's go over here with our black to get rid of the light rays there. Now I want a little bit of extra light in the top corner. We can do that by just tapping this layer. So not the layer mask, but the layer. For the brush, we are going to grab the soft brush again. And we're sticking with this orange color. Let's set the size of the brush to 25%. And let's just go over this area to add a little bit more light. So right now, the rays of light are a bit more merged together here at the top. Now for a final, final touch, I want to add some sparkles to the scene. Let's add a new layer to do that. So let's tap the plus. And for the brush, we are going to go to the luminance brushes and use the light pen. And for the color, we are going to use this ninth color in the third row. Now the opacity of the brush is at 100% and the size is at 45%. And now let's just, let's just add some sparkles in those rays of light. It's like little dust particles. I don't know. It just adds some interest to the scene. Gives it a nice sunny feel, a warm summer day. And this is really the final touch of the illustration. So you are almost done. And we have been spending so much time together for this tutorial. You should be really proud of yourself for reaching this part. almost done now just tap in some of these areas you can also do it in front of the of the palm trees just following those rays of light a little bit perhaps some on the beach a little sparklies a few more over here and then I think think we can call it done after all these hours how many hours did it take you to create this let me know in the comments and it might feel like it took a long time but believe me it took a long time for me to create this entire piece as well of course it seems a lot quicker when i make the tutorial now let's pinch and check out our work you have created an isometric mini world. And like I said, you should really be proud of yourself. Don't forget to share your work. And if you want more, why not turn it into a streak and follow this tutorial? I would like to thank you for watching. Thank you for spending this time with me. And I will see you next time for the next tutorial.